In this problem, we have a function, a quadratic function, and that is y is equal to negative 2 times the quantity x plus 2 squared. And there is a point, x is negative 2, y is 1, that is not on the curve. And there are two tangent lines to the original function that pass through that, that point. One of them would look like that, and the other one something like that. What we want to do in this particular problem is to find those points. To find the points on the curve whose tangent lines both pass through the point x is negative 2 and y is 1. And the way we're going to go about this there are two different strategies that would bring us to the same eventual answer. But the way we're going to do this is we're going to say that the slope of the tangent line has to equal the slope of the line passing through those two points. Or in other words, the derivative to the curve at one of those points has to equal the slope of the line passing through one pair of those points. So if we were to label uh, the points as negative 2 comma 1 and x comma y, just some general point on the curve, then the slope of the line passing through those two points would be m is equal to y2 minus y1, that's 1 minus y, we could also, for simplicity's sake, go in the other direction since that will give us positive variables. So we would say um, y minus 1 over x plus 2. So that's the slope of the line passing through the point negative 2 comma 1 and x comma y. Now we know that that slope has to equal the derivative of the quadratic. And so the derivative, first of all, we're going to rewrite here um, by expanding out. The x plus 2 quantity squared is x squared plus 4x plus 4. And multiplying that out, we're going to get negative 2x squared minus 8x minus 8. And then we're going to find the derivative, which is negative 4x minus 8. So what we know right now is that those two things have to equal each other. The slope of the line passing through points negative 2, 1 and x, y has to equal the derivative of the curve at that point, x. And so what we're going to do then is set these two equal to each other. And we get y minus 1 over x plus 2 is equal to negative 4x minus 8. And if we want to cross multiply, we can put the right side over 1. Now at this point, we need to make a crucial substitution. And this is where the whole problem uh, lies here. At this point, we have two variables, and we can only have one variable, and we're going to have to substitute for y in terms of x, and then solve that uh, equation that remains. So how can we substitute y for x? Well, fortunately, we have the original function, which is negative 2 times x plus 2 quantity squared is equal to y. So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to say negative 2 in place of y, negative 2 times, uh, actually I've already multiplied that out, so I'm going to use the uh, multiplied out version of that. So that's negative 2x squared minus 8x minus 8. And then I want to subtract 1 from that. That's my y minus 1. Again, this is just y. And that is the same thing as y equals negative 2 times x plus 2 
quantity squared, but just all multiplied out. All right. And so that was our y value, and we plugged it in there. So that's the key to this whole uh, setup here, making sure we get down to only having variables, uh, only having one variable, and having everything expressed in terms of x. All right, so I'm going to do one more simplification on the left side. We're going to get negative 2x squared, negative 2x squared minus 8x, and that's just going to be minus 9 over x plus 2 is equal to negative 4x minus 8 over 1. When we multiply, we're going to get negative 2x squared minus 8x minus 9. And here we're going to have to multiply these out. So I'm just going to write x plus 2 times negative 4x, negative 4x minus 8. All right, so at this point, we do need to continue. We're going to multiply out the right side, and we would get negative 4x squared minus 8x minus 8x and then minus 16. And on the left side, we have negative 2x squared minus 8x minus 9. So all we need to do at this point is combine those all onto one side. We'll move them to the right side. Simplify the right side first. Negative is 4x, negative 4x squared minus 16x minus 16, negative 2x squared minus 8x minus 9. When I add 2x squared to both sides, I'm going to get a negative 2x squared. Instead, I'm going to add the 4x to both sides and get positive values. So 2x squared. Then adding 16x to negative 8x is plus 8x. And then adding 16 to 9, to negative 9, it's going to give me a positive 7. And now I have a 0 on the right side, and we can solve for that. And um, we'd be looking for two numbers that multiply to give 14 and add to give 8. That doesn't appear to work, so I don't think that we're going to be able to do the factoring. Instead, we're going to use a quadratic formula here. A is equal to 1, B is equal to 8, C is equal to 7. And we get X is equal to negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared 64 minus 4 times 1 times 7, all divided by 2a, which is just 2. And so we're going to get negative 8 plus or minus square root 64 minus 28. And I'm going to backtrack. I did make a mistake here. And that is that x uh, a should be equal to 2 in this case here, not equal to 1. So how is that going to change? That's going to change that value there for a c. And it's also going to change the denominator. And so it's going to change everything here. And so uh, 4 times 7 is 28. 28 times 2 then is 56. And then we want 64 minus 56, which is 8. We're going to get negative 8 plus or minus 
the square root of 8 over 4 and the square root of 8 is 2 root 2 so I get negative 8 plus or minus 2 root 2 over 4 and that's going to give us a negative 2 plus or minus 1 half of the square root of 2. And so that would give us x values of negative 2 plus the square root of 2 over 2 which happens to be, as, uh, as, some, as the book might say, um, negative 2 plus 1 over the square root of 2. You can verify that those are the same uh, by uh, rationalizing, by unrationalizing the, uh, the denominator. And also, so x is equal to that, and the second value would be x is equal to negative 2 minus square root of 2 over 2. Then we need to find the y values that go with those. And to find those, we're going to have to plug back into the original function. And you recall the original function was y is equal to negative 2 times x plus 2 quantity squared. So when your x value is negative 2 plus square root of 2 over 2, you're going to get y is equal to negative 2 times the quantity negative 2 plus square root of 2 over 2 plus 2 squared. Of course, your negative 2 and your positive 2 are going to zero out. And you end up with negative 2 times square root of 2 over 2 squared, um, which is going to become negative 2 times 2 over 4, which is negative 4 over 4, which is negative 1. So that meant that our first point was x is negative 2 plus the square root of 2 over 2, and y was equal to negative 1. We'll go back and do um, the second point, which was negative 2 minus square root of 2. So again, we have y is equal to negative 2 times x plus 2 quantity squared and we're going to plug in our point y is equal to negative 2 times negative 2 minus square root of 2 over 2 plus 2 quantity squared. And finally, we're going to get negative 2. Again, these values will cancel. And negative, two, negative root 2 over 2 squared is going to give us the same thing as before. Uh, that was negative root 2 over 2 quantity squared, which is going to become negative 2 times positive 2 over 4, which is, again, negative 4 over 4, or negative 1, and giving us the answer negative 2 uh, minus square root of 2 over 2 for the x value, and negative 1 for the y value. And so that's going to do it for the solution to this problem.